Hi, everyone. Welcome to Walking in Grace. I hope everyone is doing great today and that you are walking in grace with those that are beside you. You know, it is a beautiful day out. The sun is shining, birds are singing, and the trees have the most vibrant colors. I don't know what part of the country you live in, but if you live in the part like I do where the fall has arrived, it is absolutely beautiful outside. It's beautiful to go for a walk. It's beautiful to have a cup of tea. It's beautiful for cleaning our home. Any of the things that we have to do that we put off constantly, we continue to put off. Usually it's because we have a busy schedule and we're doing so many other things that are very important. But you know, our homes, taking our time to make a phone call to a friend, we've gotten so used to sending text messages that we have forgotten how to pick up the phone and just say hi to someone. We have lost the art of friendship, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I am going to be talking about the art of friendship. Now, I am not a professional on friendships. I've also have bought into the texting phase. I've also have bought into, you know, I'd rather send a text and call because I'm too busy or not really spending time with friends, going out to get coffee, going out to just chat. Yeah, I've also lost the art of that. So today we're going to talk about how to get the art back. But before we start, I want to read a verse that to me just stood out to me. And it's 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. It is so important for us to have friends that we encourage, that we love, even those maybe that we don't think they're kind of like have anything in common with us, sometimes we forget to have friendships with them too. Those friendships are so important. Not just with people that we know, that have things in common with us, that like the same things that we like. Those things are important also. But how about sending a call or a card to someone that you really may not really associate with? Maybe someone in your church. Maybe there's a lady in your church that you really don't talk to. Sunday in and Sunday out, she sits in the back of the church. And we stay with the same cliques, with the same people. And forget to approach those who are the quiet ones. Maybe the introverts that don't like talking to anyone. We have lost the art of friendship. And friendship is so important. I want to read this poem I wrote. I wrote a book and it's called The Snowiest Day in Richville Springs. When I wrote this book, I wrote it with friendship in mind, friendship in the holidays, family, fun times, the old times when people would just stop by and sit and toast some toast and butter and a cup of coffee and just chat. We've lost those times. We've allowed fear We've allowed different things that have happened to us throughout the years to get in the way of true friendship. And this was one of the poems that I wrote, and it's called Sniffles for Christmas. Sitting in my recliner, I think of family holding my throat blanket and my tissues while I sneeze. I'm feeling really achy and a little humbuggy. A winter cold has got me declaring misery. <coughs> I hear my neighbor knocking with scones and minty tea. And now I'm feeling cheery with pleasant company. Do you know? Yes, that's a Christmas poem, but that can be for any time of the year, for any holiday, for any weekday, for any weekend. Sometimes we're feeling that way. We may not be feeling good. Maybe a little bit of misery, maybe depressed, maybe going through anxiety. And we wish that someone would just call us, pick up the phone, or knock on the door and bring us a cup of tea and some scones, or sit with us and just see how we are doing. I remember growing up, I grew up in the city, I grew up in the Bronx, and I remember our neighbors. I remember them coming over. And sitting with my mom and having coffee and chatting. That was such a special thing back then. Oh, my mom would get a phone call and talk to a friend. 
or a surprise letter in the mail that we didn't expect, or a surprise visit from far away where we showed up at the airport to greet someone that was coming to visit that we hadn't seen in years. Those were such special times. But now we've allowed the social media of life to be a communication process. We have allowed those things, instead of writing a letter to a family member that lives far away, instead of surprising them, having them pick you up at the airport, the special things that touch our heart. You know, when I wrote this book, it meant so much to me. I've also have struggled. I've been through pain in my life. I've been through hurt in my life. And I have struggled making friendships and trusting people and not wanting to be hurt. Do you ever have a problem with the word I love you? Yeah, <laughs> that can be a problem for me. You know, I love you can mean so many things. I love you for friendship. I love you to our husbands. I love you to our children. And the greatest love of all, I love God. You know, those words, I love you, some people take those offensive, offensively. Because we forget to say I love you to our neighbors and to our friends. We forget to let them know they are loved. Maybe there is someone that is thinking right now they are done with life. They haven't heard the words I love you in a very long time. I know people that have never heard those words from their parents or never got a hug or the parents were kind of cold. And it doesn't mean the parents didn't love them. They just did not know how to express love. You know, there is a story that I wrote in the book and it's called a story about a deer. And I heard this story about a deer named Buckles. And this was a special deer because he went around the neighborhoods in Richfield Springs he was a domesticated deer. He would go up to the neighbors, let them pet him, feed him apples. It was a special deer. It was a friendly deer. Buckles, my friendly deer. Buckles was my dear friend. He loved to live outdoors. I gave him lots of apples, and he heard me when I called. Buckles, Buckles, where are you? I miss your little steps following me down the road like a loyal, friendly pet. Buckles wasn't a cat or even a puppy dog. He was the sweetest little buck who loved to visit and explore. Buckles, he's gone forever. We don't know where he went. I miss him. With all my heart, my dear, amazing friend. I wrote this poem because it had to do with a friendly deer that would come in the neighborhood in the rural area and made friends with my family. And that's just really an amazing story. And they named him Buckles. But Buckles was gone one day because someone complained about him being in the area. So we never know what happened to Buckles. Do you ever feel like that? Is there one friend in your life that's disappeared, that's gone, that you say, that was my best friend. I have not seen them anymore. But they were my best friend when we were in high school, but we never pick up the phone or we don't think about through the years to write them a note or stay in touch or sometimes out of no fault of our own. They're gone. Let's remember the art of friendship. To show the grace and the love of God. Oh, sometimes I have lost that. We have become so touchy and so offended in our lives by everything and everyone that we forget the art of loving others. But one thing I have not forgotten is the art of drinking a good cup of tea. And right now I am drinking Harney and Sons Little Women Orchard House Blend. Harney and Sons is a great blend of different teas. This tea is absolutely delicious. 
I am actually drinking it from a beautiful teacup. And the teacup is so pretty. It's got green trees and a nice pond and a beautiful home or castle. I'm going to take a sip of tea. Mm. That is so relaxing. So delicious. The sachet is so pretty. Take time to have a cup of tea. Try Harney and Sons. The Little Women series is so pretty. The tin can is beautiful. And it has one of those European homes from the book Little Women in the movie. If you've ever seen it, it's such a beautiful, beautiful tin can. They do sell them on Amazon. Or you can just go on Harney and Sons and look them up. And maybe if you get yourself a cup of tea, you can invite a friend over and have some tea with them, work in the garden. There's just so many things we have lost that we shouldn't lose, that we should hold on to, like friendships, funny stories. Laughter. Just having a wonderful, wonderful life. It's not about riches and money and nice fancy cars. We can have all of those things, but if we don't have friendships and we don't know the joy of enjoying our home, we've lost everything. If we don't know the joy of walking into a comfortable home, with a little mess here and there and everything's got to be perfect and if anything's out of place we're losing our mind we have lost the art of loving those around us you know there was a time that I didn't like a mess I didn't like anything out of place everything had to be perfect God changed my heart I realized I wasn't really being of any use to anyone by everything having to be perfect because me, myself, I am so far from perfect. And I realized that you lose out on so much when you so worry about having your life so perfect. I know someone that called me the other day and was telling me they were so upset at something because they cannot handle when things don't go the way they want them to. Aren't we guilty of that? We're so guilty of wanting everything to be perfect. And we forget to enjoy those little mishaps. Sometimes things won't go the way we want to. Sometimes the sink, the sink will leak. Will leak. <laughs> Sometimes we'll stutter over our words like I just did. Sometimes we'll burn the chicken. Sometimes that friend that we thought was going to come over can't make it because they have the sniffles. <laughs> there are so many things that happen. And we are forgetting to thank God for each and every day and say, This is the day that our Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Exactly the way it is. You know, the clock still stands. There's a clock in the area where I live that it sits in a park. It's a beautiful clock that's been there for many years. The clock still stands. Its hands go round as the cardinal sings. Midnight is coming. Will it stop? As it stands inside the park. Tick tock, tick tock, all night long. I hear the clock playing a midnight song. The clock still stands in Richfield Springs. Its hands go round as the cardinal sings. Time is not going to stop for us to so stand still. We need to do the best with our time. We need to take the time we have and enjoy the beauty of life. Enjoy the comforts of home. I've learned when I go to work to make it a place where I enjoy to make it comfortable for me. 
to just enjoy my work, but I've also learned to come home to our haven and enjoy the fun things in my home, even enjoy making biscuits, even enjoy making a chicken noodle soup for my family. Enjoy making some yummy pumpkin cookies and taking them to work or taking them to a friend's house. We can't hide from the world and never interact with anyone because of fear. God doesn't want us to live like that. Yes, we must choose our friends wisely. We must know the art of friendship that God has given us. You see, Jesus is my friend and he is the friend that sticks closer than any brother. That's the first friendship that's so important to my life. Is to enjoy the friendships that God brings our way. Let's not nitpick so much on what people are worrying or what they look like. Yes, use wisdom when you choose friends. You want to choose friends that are kind. You want to choose friends that will respect you. You want to choose friends that will love you. And so many times we forget the art of friendship, the art of love. Let me share a recipe with you that I think you will totally enjoy. You will totally enjoy. And I am actually going to look in my book because I put this recipe in my book. And this is tea with friends. Tea with friends, I think it's a great thing and it's so important. And it calms any storm in your heart. I love making New winter drinks for my family. I think they're delicious. I think when we make winter drinks for our family and we enjoy them with our family, I think they're pretty awesome. So do you like tea or maybe you don't like tea? Maybe you're not a tea drinker. Not everyone is a tea drinker. Well, I like taking cinnamon spice tea or you can use orange tea and cranberry tea. With three orange slices and two cinnamon sticks and just bring it to a boil. It makes a delicious hot or cold drink. Those are the kind of things, the smells that make your home smell so nice. Just having your home so comfortable with pillows, plush dolls. You might say, well, I can't afford any of that. Well, guess what? Neither can I. That's why I go to thrift stores and garage sales. And you know what is nice? When you give a friend a gift. Maybe you have a pillow you're going to get rid of. Or something you're just going to donate. Why not wrap up something, put a bow on it, and give it to a friend? Let's not forget the art of making friends. The art of loving others. The art of friendship. I hope you enjoyed this podcast today. Go out and make a friend, call a friend, send a card, a surprise letter. Tell them you're thinking about them. When you feel anxious, call a friend. You're never alone. And remember, Jesus, he is the friend that sticks closer than anyone else. So thank you, my friends, for joining me for the art of friendship. Don't forget to try Harney and Sons Tea. The Little Women Orchard brand is delicious. You would really, really love it. And remember, remember to reach out to someone today. And remember most of all to walk in grace. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And enjoy this beautiful weather that our best friend God has sent upon us. Have a wonderful day, my friends. Bye.